Okay, so as from now, we can upload the software to the ESP, to the controller, using a firmware uh, file instead of the standard uh, INO file that you're familiar. This file, we can skip that. We, how to do that? We can go to the uh, root of the repository and you will find a folder called firmware. There you will find uh, the firmware files. Here we can see, for example, 031 and this is version 04. So first, let's download both files and I will show you two options on how to upload them to the controller. One, from, uh, or one option is to upload from scratch and the other one is how to upgrade. First, let's download locally the firmware files. So to do that, just click on the file, go to download, save and go to firmware back. Let's take 04 and download. And we have both files locally. Now, how to upload them. For that, we will go to the uh, Arduino IDE, go to File, Examples, go to ESP8266 HTTP Update Server, and Web Updater. Open that sketch. Great. Now, the only thing that you need to do is go to line 12 and 13 and you can see that there is a place to change your home SSID and password. That's your home router actually. So let me put the um, uh, name and password. That's it. Once that's ready, just upload that uh, to the controller. Obviously, make sure that you choose your card and uh, the port here, that's from the settings. So that's now compiling the sketch and this is now uploading. Great, done uploading. We can go to the serial monitor and you will see that there is a new special link that created this one. Just copy it and open a new tab and go to that link. As you can see, we have a new uh, page that will help us to upload the first version. To do that, just click on choose file and let's take 031, that version, and open and update firmware. That's now uploading the software to the controller and we'll, that's it, update success. Now it's rebooting. And that's it. The application now are uploaded and we can check here. You can see this is the version that we uploaded, 031. Once the new version uploaded, actually from now on, we don't need the Arduino ID anymore. We can just work with the browser. So until now, what we saw is how to upload the firmware from scratch to a new controller or if you want just to start from the beginning. For now, if you want to upgrade, we can go to the firmware update link here, choose a file, we can go and take the 04 version that we downloaded earlier. Open. You see 04 and update. It will take a few seconds. You see this uploaded, rebooting, please wait. Also take a few seconds. No need to do anything else, just wait. And that's it. The application is up and running and we can see here that version 04 is uploaded. Simple as that. And from, from now on, again, if you want to update to the future version, you can go to settings and go to the open firmware update page and do the same process. Just pick the latest firmware and you can upload that. 
one more thing that I want to show and mention is that uh, with the new application you can access the application using a special uh, domain name rehamradio.local you don't need anymore to use uh, the IP as you did in the past just use HTTP um, and um, a rehamradio.local as you see here and you can access the application and that's it application is up and running the watchdog timeout feature the idea behind the watchdog feature is to make sure that the motor is not running non-stop without attention. The usage is very simple. We just need to set the timeout that we want under the setting tab. What we see here is uh, 5000 milliseconds. It means it's 5 seconds. Let's change that for the example to 3000. Just a simple um, parameter. Let's update that. We got a notification that it was updated. OK. Now let's go back to the controller tab and let's test it. I'm going to test that by using the scan. I'm going to click one, two, three and timeout. The, the feature stopped the motor after three seconds. Uh, the way to reset that notification is very simple. Just click on any of these buttons like that and it was reset. Even if I will click on one of the left or right uh, uh, buttons, it will work. Let's see. One, two, three, timeout. Say. One more thing to mention that uh, this feature is uh, working thanks to that checkbox. And uh, if you will disable that, there is no watchdog uh, feature enabled. It means that the motor will run non-stop until you will stop it manually. So uh, if the recommendation is just uh, enable that feature, uh, put something that makes sense to the way that you are working, like, I don't know, 30 seconds. That's the safest way to work. The range limits feature. This feature will make sure that the motor will move only between the minimum edge and the maximum edge. This is the feature that we need if you want to use capacitors with range limits like the vacuum capacitors. Let's see how that works. When the feature enabled, we get a new bar that represents the allowed range for the motor. If we will go to the setting and disable this feature, you can see that the bar, the motor, uh, a position bar disappeared. Let's go back to setting, enable that, and that bar came back. We can use the left, right, and scan buttons only between these edges. If you will hit one of these edges, the motor will stop and the motor status will show a special status for that. Let's test that. Let's take that motor to the left. And we got edge. That's idle edge. We cannot go beyond that point. We can do go to the other side. Let's go even though let's do scan. And that's the other edge. We cannot mo move more than that. If we want to narrow the range, we will move the motor to the new edge and click set min or set max. Let's see that. Let's say that we want to um, um, narrow the range to this position somewhere here. So let's go to um, move that motor to the right position. Let's say to this point and go to the setting and this will be the max range. You can see that max limit is the exact current position of the motor. Let's go back to the controller. And that's it. That's a new range. We cannot do that. We cannot move beyond that point. Let's set now the range on the other side. Let's go to the other side. And we see that this is the current range here. Let's narrow that to here. Go to settings. Set minimum range. We can see that the minimum is the current. Go back to the controller and that's the edge. Now the controller will move only between 
this edge and this edge as expected. Now, if we want to extend the range, we will need to disable the feature. We will need to move the motor to the new edge and then enable this feature again. Let's say that we'll take the motor to that edge and we want to extend that a bit more. So I will need to go to settings, disable the range limits, and let's do it slowly. Let's continue and move that range. The new range is going to be here. Now I need to lock that position, so I'm going to back to settings, enable the range limits feature, go back to the controller, and that's the range, the new range. That's it. From now on, it will move only from the minimum edge and the new maximum range.